I think customer centricity is something that can be a real competitive advantage for a company. Everybody says they want to be customer centric for obvious reasons that you want your customers first and deliver products and services that add value to their lives and that they're willing to pay for that allows you to grow as a business. The hard part is how do you scale that? Because as you start to grow up as a business, you have a lot more uh, demands on, on your time. Towards the end of 2016, I was feeling burnt out. I asked myself three questions. What could I do that would bring me joy, that would have a big impact on the business, and that nobody else would be willing to do? I would take a month to go spend a day in the lives of our top agents, who were the key drivers of our success to date. I would work for them, live with them, and learn from them. Five weeks, 12 agents, two countries, 12 towns, 2,580 kilometers of road covered with one clear purpose. Learn as much as possible to shape Zona's customer-centric identity. On the 15th of May, 2017, we were off. I heard amazing stories of entrepreneurship, dedication, and impact. For example, the, the very first agent I met with, Masozi, I was able to really connect with her and understand how she, she became successful and how she built her, her business and what is now, she describes as her empire in, uh, in Lusaka. We're here with Masozi at what was her very first outlet on Cairo Road. That was uh, in 2012 when she started and now in 2017 she's grown her business to 27 outlets. She employs 43 people and she turns over uh, equivalent of more than a million dollars a month in transaction value. My favorite thing is that I get to be my own boss and um, I feel a lot of other tellers who work with me and other agents who are seeing what I'm doing now also in a way look up and would also like to achieve or you know, do what I'm doing and for me just being a role model to a lot of people now is, uh, is a great achievement as well so yeah. Another key learning um, for me on how we weren't supporting agents well was when I was visiting Paul. Hey, hi, uh, this is Paul Katumbi. I'm 35 years old. I'm an agent in Kawe. And I, I was staying with them and, and having dinner and I, I asked his wife when the last time Paul had a, had a day off was. And um, she said, yeah, maybe Christmas. No, he actually worked at Christmas. Um, and then she remembered that it was the last time Zambia had an election because he couldn't work because um, all the businesses were closed. What that really made me realize was how um, internally at Zona, we were having conversations around how do we, how do we get Paul to expand faster? How do, how do we push him to grow more? Um, if he's not gonna do it, do we need to set up another agent to make sure that there's like healthy competition? Like that conversation with his wife just made me realize how we weren't viewing the agents as, as people and how it wasn't a sustainable model. Um, and how we, we really need to have a more holistic agent model that supports their well-being and their, their personal growth and development. And what I was able to take back to the team uh, was how do we f flip our mindset from being uh, managers of agents in, a, in more of a command and control model of just pushing these people for growth and development to being investors in entrepreneurs and doubling down on the successful ones and supporting them to remove bottlenecks and, and grow them as human beings. So Mandia was a, a very special agent as well. Um, somebody that Brad, our, our co-founder, often refers to as his brother from another mother. I'm Squanda Mundia, one of the longest serving Zona agents in Zambia. And uh, he also started off with us as an employee, uh, what we called a sales generator at the time, where he was setting up other agents. He was so good at, at setting up agents in the Western province oh, that, that we actually went to him and said, well, why don't you just be an agent yourself? Now he has set up uh, a number of uh, outlets across the Western province in Zambia, and he's doing so well, and he's, he's, he thanked me, saying that it was uh, one of the most important decisions in his life and, and a, a real turning point being pushed by Zona. And one of the really uh, powerful stories that he shared was how he had set up a 
um, an agent business in a really isolated uh, community along the Zambia-Angola border. Uh, next week on Monday, I'm opening an outlet in Sikongo, which is about 18 kilometers away from Angolian border. Uh, this place do not have an um, internet network. What is there is only voice internet and uh, Zamtel. And without data, um, he couldn't access our system and transact, but he felt that the community really needed these services of sending and receiving money and, and keeping their money safe. Um, so what he did was he, he would uh, hire um, a teller um, to work for him in, in the capital of Mongu, in his main shop, and then another teller to work in this, in this isolated community. On top of that, once he, he started demonstrating that there was a business case, he worked with the local community leaders to go engage the, uh, the telecommunications regulator in Zambia um, that then enforced that the mobile operators would have to bring data connectivity to that community so that they now have internet. He just wanted to have, this stage in his life, he said he wanted to have as much impact as he possibly could. So another example of uh, an amazing agent I met was, uh, was a gentleman named Musanide uh, in Lusaka. He had, had grown an incredible business in Lusaka City Market, uh, extremely densely populated and really busy part of, of the country and of the capital city. And uh, I remember having dinner with him and his wife at his home and I was just asking him about his ambition. And he just said, ah, oh, Mike, I need to grow. And I said, you know, how, like, what does growth mean to you? Do you need a few more outlets? Um, do you need more floats? Uh, how do we help unlock this, this growth that you want? And he said, no, Mike, I want to be an international businessman. He's like, you, want, you need to help me, uh, help me get to this, this level that I know I can achieve, but I just need support. Um, and really realizing that uh, these agents, a lot of them have hopes and dreams in the same way that, that I did when I first moved to Zambia a long time ago. Um, and met Brad and Brett and we, you know, we were trying to, to figure out what is our vision at Zona and we came up with this concept of a cashless Africa, right? And you, you need to start with these, uh, these big visions and big statements or you'll never have a chance of succeeding. Like entrepreneurs on the ground in small business in Africa are no different and, and to be able to have somebody like Musanide uh, you know, with, with that level of ambition and then to meet uh, the, the team that he's assembled where he had just the most amazingly impressive group of tellers that were completely bought into the Zona values, the Zona way of working, um, that really revered him as a leader, were totally motivated, uh, well paid, um, and he just treated them extremely well that they were excited to come to work every day. And I was, I was quite inspired by that. So the awesome thing about customers is they actually know what they want pretty well. And to be customer centric, all you really need to do is open your ears and listen. When I got back from my trip, I think I had a much better understanding of, of who our customers were and their hopes and ambitions. So for example, the first agent I met when I got to Malawi was a young woman named Elisiba. And she had, I think, seven outlets uh, in and around Blantyre and was uh, one of our very first agents that we'd set up in, in Malawi and had grown a, a very impressive business and really seemed to me to have the potential to be like the, the Malawian um, Masozi or Sandra, or these, these giants that we had, had seen uh, rise in, in, in Zambia over the last eight and a half years. I remember being in the car with her and I, I asked her, you know, Elisiba, if, if you were CEO for a day, what would you do? And she had such a, a crisp answer where she said, I would get our top agents together and, and ask them what their most important problems were. And I would prioritize um, solving their problems. And this was something that was uh, consistent across all the agents that I talked to, um, where they felt that we, we weren't involving them in our expansion process and they were all battling with how much float they had. But just that insight of like, you just need to ask the question and the agents will tell you what to do. Um, it, was a, it was a total change in mindset from back to what, what it always should have been, but I felt that we had moved away from for a period of time. So the last agent I visited on the entire trip uh, was a woman named Memory in Lilongwe in Malawi. And uh, she told me this incredible story about how she became an agent where 
Um, she was uh, unemployed for a period of time, as, as many young you know, Malawians are, and literally saw a new Zona branded vehicle uh, driving down the road stopped and, and started talking to the driver who was one of our, I think he was our country manager on the ground at the time, didn't know anything about Zona but, um, but the driver gave her, gave her a card, uh, she went into the office that we had set up the next day and then within 24 hours had signed a contract to become an ag agent without even knowing what an agent is. She was telling me this story in the presence of her mother and her brother who then interrupted and said that they were very skeptical and they thought she was going to be taken advantage of. Um, but she didn't have an alternative at the time and then found herself uh, managing a Zona outlet in the center of the long way and then realized within the first month that hey this is pretty cool to be my own boss and I can make money doing this uh, and then like we had done with with our successful agents in Zambia we started expanding her and, and allowing her to grow, grow new outlets and hire tellers. She realized this is a business that I can double down on and, and make a livelihood and uh, is now one of our most successful agents in Malawi um, with a big aspiration to grow further. But where it really hit home for me was when I asked her what her ambition was and I said, you know, Memory, where am I gonna find you in five years? Um, maybe I'll take your position. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> and without, uh, without flinching, she says, I'm gonna have your job. You know, so, uh, for a young Malawian woman to, uh, to have that level of, of ambition and confidence, I, I just I hope one day she gets it. So what I've come to realize is I don't believe I can be an effective leader if I'm not connected to our customers. Because it, it gives me such a, a sense of purpose but also a lot of insights and ideas that I can then bring back to the team and, and communicate and share. Um, and amplify these stories uh, in a way that other people can't because of, of the position I'm in. Uh, so I would definitely encourage other, other leaders to take the plunge and to, to lead from the, the front and be completely obsessed with your customers. <laughs>